In this example, we are required to make up a working solution. And what we have is a stock solution with a given uh, concentration. Uh, so how does that actually work? So let's uh, do a quick uh, sketch how this works. We have a stock solution. That here is our stock solution. And from this stock solution, we take out a certain volume. Let's call that volume two. That is the stock solution, which contains a certain amount of moles. And we place that into our uh, vessel. That is our working solution. And that is the solution that we want. Here we've got the stock. And this one is our working solution. And this should also have a certain volume. Let's call this volume one. And a certain concentration. Let's call this concentration one. That is what we want. We are now trying to figure out um, how much of this volume here do we actually need to transfer into our uh, working solution so that we end up with the correct volume and the correct concentrations. So how can we address this problem? Well, we do that in two steps. First of all, we calculate the number of moles let's call them number of moles that we want to have in this working solution here. So that is step one. Calculate, calculate number of moles required in the working solution. And once we have done that, we will then figure out how much volume we need from the stock solution that exactly contains this number of moles that we need. So find the volume, volume with the required number of moles. number of moles. And that would be the volume from the stock solution. So let's get started. First, calculate the number of moles required in the working solution. So that's the first step. And we can use our uh, well-known con uh, concentration equation. So let's call this C1 equals N1 over V1. That is our working solution. We make N the subject. So N1 equals C1 times V1. And if we so wish, we can uh, put in already numbers. So our N1 would be the concentration of the working solution. And that is 19.85. We've got millimolar, so we need to take that into account. 19.85 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per liter times our volume. That is 220. And again, we've got a milliliter here, so we need to be careful with that. So that would be 220 times 10 to the minus 3 liter. And we see the unit liter would cancel out. And we have got mole left. So this is the number of moles that we want to have in our working solution. Now we need to figure out in the second step, what is the volume of the stock solution that gives us exactly this amount of N1. So that is our second step. And we know that the concentration that uh, we have in our stock solution equals N2 over 
v2. Now we know that the number of moles that we have in our working solution must be the same number of moles that we take out. So this must be the same. N2 must be the same as N1. We can make the volume the subject of this equation. We just do a little bit of rearrangement. So we got V2 equals N2 over C2. And this N2, of course, that is the number of moles that we just calculated. So we have, we can now write, this would be 19.85 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, and I just reinstate the units because it's uh, quite nice to see what happens. Mole per liter times 220 times 10 to the minus 3 liter. That was the number of moles and we divide that by the concentration of the working solution which was 347 times 10 to the minus 7 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per liter. What we see is actually that the mole per liter, the unit, cancels out. That's good. And we've got the unit liter left. 10 to the minus 3 also cancels out. So we can write for the volume of the stock solution. This would be 19.85 times 10 to the minus 3 times 220. And we've got the unit liter here divided by 347. And we can put that into a calculator and we would get something along the line of uh, 0 0.01258 liter. Now we need to be careful with significant figures. And uh, we can also convert that into milliliter. We just multiply it by a factor of a thousand. Then we get this into milliliter, which is a far more common approach, especially since we've got milliliter given here in the question. So if we multiply this by milliliter and write it sort of in a scientific format, semi scientific format, we would get roughly uh, 1.26 times 10 to the power of 1 milliliter. So this is how we could uh, approach a question like that. I hope it makes sense and thank you very much for watching.